Hello budget buddies and welcome back to the channel. So today's video I am going to freeze dry some butternut squash. These are the last four from my 2022 garden and I've done probably three or four batches now of spaghetti squash um, in the freeze dryer. So I am happy that we are finally finished with this and these butternut squash lasted a long time in the pantry. It is now the middle of February and they are still okay on the middle, but there was a couple that I had processed in the batch prior to this and the seeds had started to almost sprout on the inside. So I knew that it was time for these to be completely processed and out of the pantry. First thing I'm gonna do is peel I didn't even wash these because I just knew that the peel was coming off anyways. Peel them and then I pull off the tops and the bottoms and we gut the inside and take out all the seeds. I'm putting everything in this little pink bowl here because that is going to go to the chickens. Chickens absolutely love these seeds and the scraps. So I am just chopping these into pretty large cubes. Um, I've done this a couple different ways now and I just noticed that the large cubes are, they process just as well as the small cubes and it's just easier to make them larger. So that's what I am doing for this round. And I will also say that these four butternut squash did not fill up all four trays. Um, you will see later here how many trays they filled up and so I ended up throwing on a couple of other things, which I had meant to record, but then the kids were screaming in the background. And so I did not record that. These four filled up like two and a half trays. And then on one of the trays, the kids had half of a little homemade pizza left, which I did a short on. And at the end of this video, I will do a taste test. Threw that on just like a last minute whim. And then the other tray, I did a bag of frozen green beans. So now it is time to load all those trays and get the freeze dryer going. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is get my harvest right pre-freezing. So I'm going to latch the door, make sure that my drain valve is on open. Um, I will empty out this water too. And all you do, there it goes is push start so this is going to cool down this vacuum chamber so that way when we put our food in there it does not get too warm so that is what it does we're going to wait 15 minutes and then we're going to load our trays just make sure this door is closed so that way it can keep all the coolness in there Okay, so now the freeze dryer says to load the trays into the freeze dryer, close the drain valve, and we will make sure that this door is securely closed. So let's go get our trays and load them in. All right, we've got our four trays loaded. We are going to close the door, secure. We are going to lift this up. That is going to close off the drain valve. And then we are going to push continue. This will automatically do its freezing, and then once it senses that everything in here is frozen, then it will kick on the vacuum pump, and it will start to seal this up and start its process of drying. Okay guys, so this has been running for a total of 26 hours. I left it go a little bit longer than probably what it needed, so now I'm going to turn it off and pull the trays out and we're going to package those up. So the first thing I'm going to do is push cancel and then the machine is going to prompt me to open the drain valve and then you can warm the trays but I, I never do. So I'm going to pull that and show you to done with that noise that means that it's depressurized and you can safely open the door. I always do a quick check to make sure that everything looks dry. 
outro looks good. Green beans are great. more dry time because that one tray was not quite done. So these are definitely dry now. There's the pizza, the tomato. We're gonna pull these out and um, get them packaged up. All right, so we have our four trays out and um, I am te technically, I am out of Mylar bags. So I am going to short term store these in some mason jars and um, I'm actually not going to vacuum seal them. I will link everything below for you if you are interested in everything that I typically use. But because I know that I'm going to add these into something here soon, I'm not gonna vacuum seal the jar. I'm just gonna stuff it really full so there's not much oxygen in there. And these will stay good like this for a year or two. Um, depending on if I open the jar over and over. You could put an oxygen absorber in here. I have just found it is unnecessary and I do not like to waste them because they are expensive. So I only typically use them when I am long-term storing items and this is probably my third or fourth batch of butternut squash from the garden um, of last year. So I have quite a bit already in Mylar bags. So these ones we are going to store like that. And then I just reuse canning jar lids because there is no need to waste a fresh one. And these are like hard as a rock, so let's see if you can see that. They are very, very hard. And 
do remember I did not blanch these. These are completely raw. Um, so when I do reconstitute them, I will use hot water or I will put them in a, in a casserole or something. Um, that's typically how we eat these. About a tray and a quarter fits in two jars. So I'm actually going to use this jar. This is just a reused nacho jalapeno jar. Um, one of my friends works in the concession stands the for the Parks and Rec, and they had a bunch of these and a bunch of um, like hot dog plastic containers that they had washed out and they were storing. And she was like, I wonder if Natasha would use these some way, shape, or form because she knows that we are on a budget here and we are trying to reuse everything that we can. So. She gave me a whole bunch of those, and I've been storing freeze-dried food in those as well. But things like this are perfect to reuse for this. We, about, we are going to fill this whole jar up, it looks like. Perfect. Look at that. It all fit in there. So we got two full quarts and then however big this is, 64 ounces in this one of butternut squash. I have my one tomato, which I'm just going to throw that into a sandwich bag. Which you can also store like this. Um, I did learn from another channel that I watch, I can't remember which one because it's been a couple months now, that they took, like let's say I had a whole pizza of these and I wanted to make them into like single serving packets. He took something like this and put it into a sandwich bag and then poked holes in the sandwich bag and then slid a whole bunch of them into his Mylar bag. Um, so he didn't waste any space in the Mylar bag and then popped in his oxygen absorber and then sealed the pack. So that way, the food he was able to then just pull out one or two servings and then reseal his Mylar bag without wasting all the space in it. And I thought that that was extremely creative and we'll be doing that in the near future with some of my other items. All right, and then this is just green beans, just a frozen bag of green beans that we got on sale from Food Lion. Had 16 ounce bags for under a dollar. I'm gonna say they were 88 cents per bag and it was a wonderful sale and I went and stocked up the entire freezer full of vegetables and this is probably one of the last bags that needed to be freeze dried. And that fills up. Pretty much the whole jar. There we go. Another lid. That lid's all over the place. Okay, so now you can either write on top of the jar or you can use a, um, what are they called? A dry erase marker and write on here what this is. I personally don't because I know what everything is. Um, I can obviously look at that and go, that's green beans. But if you have multiple varieties of green beans or you want to know when you freeze dried it, then that would be smart to put the date on it. But I typically don't. I need to get better at that, I guess. All right, and then lastly is this pizza. I'm going to break this in half because I am ugh, going to do a video with my squirrel monkey. Um, I'm going to see what he thinks of that, but let's, okay. So let's see what we think about freeze dried pizza on National Pizza Day. I've never tried freeze dried pizza. Um, this was just one that we homemade um the kids had like a little three pack of crust with sauce and i let them make them and this is just what one of the kids didn't eat so that is one of the benefits of a freeze dryer if you've got kiddos that don't always eat everything throw it on the freeze dryer tray and 
preserve it for another day. Let's see how this tastes. I'm smiling because one, I am intolerant to dairy, so I do not eat things like this um, very often. And two, when you freeze dry something and you take out the moisture content, the flavor intensifies. So this is like a piece of pizza on steroids when it comes to flavor, okay? You can pretty much taste, like I can taste the basil that I put in the sauce. Mm. This is really good. This is a 10 out of 10. Um, friends, go try some freeze dried pizza. Mm. So good. That's a winner. I would not be mad if grid went down and I had this in my go bag or in my car and just needed a snack. This obviously is not something you would want to reconstitute because it does have the crust and bread is very finicky with reconstitution, but it don't need reconstitute. This is perfect. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're new, which most of you probably are since this is a new channel. We will see you in the next